So you're a pirate, huh? Or yes. Or yes. Where where have you sailed, pirate? All seven of them? Can you name any of the seven seas? No, but you've sailed them. Do you have any souvenirs from the seven seas? Uh, yeah. Like what? Well, one day when I went on the seven seas, I took a picture of a whale. Ooh, what kind of whale? Beluga. A beluga whale? So you're probably in some cold waters? Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're a cold water pirate? No. No, you're a warm water pirate. Oh, okay. It's just that sometimes I see beluga whales. Oh, okay, because they're doing their migration thing? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Uh, what else have you done as a pirate? Um, well... Have you had any boat battles, or rescued any princesses, or stolen any treasure? Well, I have stolen two boxes of treasure already. Oh, that's cool. What was it all? Besides, like, treasure, what was the treasure? Well... There was some necklaces and gold coins. Ooh, that's cool. Anything else? Well, on the other treasure box, which is a very big treasure box, and there was like pictures of certificates that were for like, actually they were tickets oh. to lots of Okay, so you've got a whole treasure chest of tickets. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Well, you know what? We have a show to do. So, it's Wednesday. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's Wednesday. We're still doing the quarantine kitchen thing. Today, I'm joined by, do you want to be Pirate Blaze or Captain Blaze or Captain Hook Blaze or what are you, Buccaneer Blaze? What is it? Buccaneer Blaze. Buccaneer Blaze. I love it. All right. And Buccaneer Blaze, not Blaze. Okay, Buccaneer Blaze, not Buccaneer Blaze. So, what we're doing today is we're going to make gnocchi, because somebody requested it, but we're not going to make the gnocchi that I am assuming they requested, which there's probably a bummer. Because I, stand so good, because I don't make a lot of gnocchi, so I'm probably not the best at it. And working with potatoes can be problematic, but I am extremely good at pastry, so I'm going to show you a variant of gnocchi called gnocchi parisienne, which is made from patashu, which is why we have gnocchi, I choose you, because it is a patashu base. For those of you who do not know what patashu is, it is one of like the mother doughs of pastry. Uh, with the same recipe I'm going to show you today, I can make eclairs, or crullers, or churros, or gnocchi parisienne, or I can use them to make more advanced pastries than that, cream puffs, all kinds of random stuff. It is very, very, very versatile. So. Our recipe is we have 125 grams of water, 50 grams of butter, 75 grams of flour, one large egg, one large egg yolk. Uh, that is the most basic version of this recipe. If we were going to do, look, you're getting notes. If we were going to do something particular with it, we can start to adapt the recipe to do what we want. Hi, Dominic. There you go. All right. So what that means is, and this is kind of a larger pastry thing, every recipe that you have, is a guideline and that's how it should be interpreted because I can tell you I've cooked in a couple different countries and I've worked at different elevations and I work with random ingredients and sometimes I overcook the potato or I undercook this so a recipe is only a guideline and so for a professional we find a recipe that we like and then we start to adapt it to what we want it to do and I'll kind of allude to that as we go but there's a lot of science that goes into it so I don't want to bore anybody what was your question Buccaneer Blaze? Um... Can we do the joke? Yes, we can do the joke. What is the joke? What do you call a pirate who skips school? <sighs> we are all skipping school these days. What do you call a pirate that skips school? Captain Hookie. Oh, Captain Hookie. Because we had to explain to you what Hookie meant, right? Yeah. Do you miss school? Yeah. Yeah, nobody misses it more than I do, I promise. Uh, so, let's jump right in. We have our water and our fat, and hopefully by now you know that if I say the word fat, we can use any type of fat. And I'm using water today for gnocchi, but it could be another liquid. A lot of times we use milk, so anything within that spectrum of no fat to about, you know, 10, 20% fat as far as liquid is concerned. Once we use other liquids that have a lot of acid, it changes the way that it absorbs the egg, and it will change the way that the gluten forms. But 
We're gonna go today with water and butter. I have added salt and pepper only to this uh, because I like to keep things kind of basic and season them in the end because this is where we start to cross over, somebody's over now, into the uh, savory realm from the pastry kitchen. So in my saute pan, of course, if you're gonna use a larger recipe, use whatever vessel you want to. I have my water, I have my butter, I have salt, I have pepper, I have my flour on the side. This is one of the few recipes where it is recommended to sift your flour at least once. You can even sift it twice because it's going to incorporate much, much faster when we get to the next step. All right, so what we're looking for here is we need to make sure that our fat is completely melted. We need to make sure that it is the same temperature as the water and we want it to be evenly distributed as best as it can be because what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix our flour in there. Now that's extremely difficult to do because we should know by now water and fat separate, right? So what we're looking for is we need it to boil. As it boils, the fat will circulate from top to bottom and immerse itself as the heat kind of transfers throughout the entire product. Occasionally, go ahead. And then it turns into a bunch of bubbles. And then it turns into a bunch of bubbles. Now what I, I get those in there. Yes. Now what I don't want to do is boil this for a long period of time because what is boiling most is of course the water. So I start changing the ratio of water to fat in this. So once it is boiling, I will turn off the heat, I will remove it from the heat, and then all at once, drop my flour in there. Now, I will stir this around until it creates a giant ball of dough. If you've ever made cream puffs or some versions of anything with patachou, you should know this. It's a pretty lengthy technique to type out, so I figured it would be best just to show you. So we're gonna mix it together until it's a nice ball. It will absorb all that flour. And the reason we wanna sift that flour is so we don't get giant chunks of uh, flour that solidify in there and don't incorporate into our dough. But we're mixing, 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 smashing it together to make sure it's nice and smooth on the bottom. And then what we'll do is we'll bring it together and you'll see that what was a little bit of flour turned all of that water and butter into a stiff dough. Okay, this is what we call a panade. It's not important, it's just a little thing to know. Now we're gonna cook this panade for a minute or two because we want to knock out some of that excess it moisture. It looks like a fish. It kind of looks like a fish. Yeah, I guess I could see that. It looks like a fish in the way clouds sometimes look like fishes. Like, that's not an instruction at all. It was just an observation from Buccaneer Blaze. So we're cooking it over medium heat. We're just moving it around. The goal here is just to get some of that extra water out of there to ensure that our eggs absorb as uniformly as possible. Obviously, with all things flour and all things protein-based, they can only absorb so much liquid before they simply burst. So we're only gonna cook it for a minute or two. What we're looking for is a little steam to come off of there, and we wanna see a very, very, very slight skin form on the bottom of our pan. Yes, sir? Um, like last show when I was a snow cone, um, if you do this, then it will melt you. Yeah, but you're not a snow cone. You're a buccaneer today. Yeah. You spend all day out in the sun. All right, I'm satisfied with the moisture I've lost. You saw it's about a minute, maybe two. It's really not a super, super lengthy process. And now I'm gonna add my eggs. Not like right now, because obviously it's still super hot. If you are worried about that, you can transfer it to another vessel so that it will cool down more quickly. Or you could, of course, transfer this to a stand mixer, especially if you're gonna make a much larger amount. Now the eggs I'm using today are regular chicken eggs, but they could be any other eggs. Uh, duck, <laughs> duck eggs. Ostrich eggs, you'll see those pop up on the cooking competitions from time to time. The goal here that I would recommend is to go ahead and pre-blend your eggs. Go ahead and break them and blend them to begin with because that'll make the incorporation process that much easier. For Noki Pure Easy M, we're not really super, super, super worried about the perfect texture because we're gonna cook it a little differently. But if I was gonna use this to make eclairs, I would be very concerned about it having this ideal texture because if we look at what the word patashu means, patashu Really, pat transfers to paste. This isn't really a dough or a batter. It should be a paste when we are ready to use it. So if you think about a paste that hopefully we use every day, what paste do you use every day, Buccaneer Blaze? Uh, toothpaste? Toothpaste, yeah. So it should have a texture kind of similar to toothpaste. Obviously, we don't need it to be extra coarse. There's not going to be any polishing or anything in there. But I think we all know what I'm talking about, the texture of paste versus a batter or dough. Fist bump, yeah. Well... That's not a hook hand, is it? It is a hook hand. Well, don't, don't fist bump me with a hook hand. All right. All right. Now, it's cool enough. We should be okay. We will take and we will start adding some of our eggs. 
and we will mix, mix, mix until they completely incorporate. Now, of course, again, if you are unsure about doing this in the same pot because you're worried about heat, I don't blame you at all. You can do this in a different pot, or you can transfer it to a stand mixer fitted with a paddle, and it will incorporate that just fine. So we're just mixing, mixing, mixing. We don't want to add all the eggs at once because, again, I've already mentioned, this will only absorb so much moisture at a time. So when I know it's ready is when it will incorporate and come back to a more uniform texture. So I'm just constantly getting it in there nice and smooth. When it comes back together into one uniform mass, then I will add the next addition of eggs. This is, this is a very small amount of eggs. Of course, when I work in hotels and stuff, again, this is an eclair recipe. If I'm making hundreds of eclairs, instead of adding one or two eggs at a time, I'll break it into quarters. Sometimes I might add as many as 50 eggs at a time. Let those mix in. Once it is back to a ball, a nice paste, I will add the next addition of eggs. Wait, are you saying toothpaste? Toothpaste. Oh. Now, one of my favorite things, if any of you have ever been to any of my catered events or the Coppell Farmer Farm to Table dinner from the farmer's market, a lot of times I like to make a patachou base. I like to add a huge amount of cheese to it and bake it in the oven to make what's called gougere. Wait. They are super crazy delicious Is and they are awesome. Is someone going to take a picture of us? Okay. I, I didn't say I wanted some cheese. I said you can add cheese to your patachou base with some savory seasonings. And if you bake those, then those are gougere, delicious little cheese puffs. I love them so, so much. Now you could do something similar here as we're about to poach these to turn them into gnocchi parisi in. But I'm gonna leave them neutral because it will be that much easier to season them later. We haven't ever introduced these to the kids. So I'm gonna try and give myself as many opportunities for them not to find something wrong with it. Right, Buccaneer Blaze? If I add one type of cheese, of course it'll be the wrong type of cheese, and if I put one kind of seasoning, it'll be spicy, so we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that doesn't happen. Now, you see I've gotten all my eggs in there. I have a beautiful paste. It's really nice, really smooth, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna transfer that to a piping bag. Now, I have my piping bag fitted with a pastry tip today. I know that most people at their houses don't have piping bags. Of course, I have tons of them. You could definitely use a Ziploc bag with the corner cut. I like to use a pastry tip, that way it's more uniform. The enemy of all piping is, of course, air. So pat your dough down, your batter, your paste down, and then using a flat edge, scoop it down. Or if you don't have a, a bowl scraper like I do, use the corner of your counter, scrape it down, let it help get the air out, twist it, and now we can set it to the side for a minute. Hold on there, Buccaneer Blaze. I know what you want to say. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do with this, we are going to bring some water to a boil, and then we will lower it to just below a boil because we are going to poach these. When we are done poaching these, <laughs> they will come out and go into a bowl, and then to them we will typically add sauce and cheese, which of course brings us to our next joke. What is our joke, Buccaneer Blaze? What is a pirate's favorite cheese? Um, I don't know. What is it? Cheddar. Well, don't tell me. Tell them. Cheddar. Yeah, but you have to be like, ar, cheddar. Cheddar. Okay. Now my water has some. Don't jump on it. My water has some salt and some pepper, but that's it. Of course, you can season it much more assertively if you would like to. Um, I know that for me, I don't like sprigs of rosemary, but I do like the flavor of rosemary. So a lot of times if I'm going to poach something, eggs or you know, freezia, I'll throw some rosemary in the water. It will have enough flavor to carry over without somebody biting into a sprig of rosemary. Likewise, thyme, garlic, peppercorns, whatever. Just make sure nobody bites into one of the peppercorns, obviously, on the other side. You can boil stuff like that once or twice before it essentially loses all of its usefulness. So. Our water is getting good and hot. Do we have any questions about the patachou base as we're about to start poaching? Do you have any questions, Buccaneer Blaze? Uh, nope. Mm, nope. Wait, I know. Okay, what? Uh, why don't you want to eat the seasoning? Because that's part of the recipe. Sure, so yes, some seasoning is part of the recipe. That's a very good question. But some seasonings are very, very intense. Like when you bite into them, it's just too much and it ruins what's called the palate. The palate is what we taste food with. 
not entirely, but that's what we term the entire process, right? So especially herbs that have a lot of acid or oil, or they have a lot of fragrance, which will block our nasal abilities when we're tasting. If somebody bites into something really, really strong, like a giant sprig of rosemary or thyme or some peppercorns or horseradish or something like that, then it makes it really difficult for them to taste food from that point forward. So as a chef, it's probably a really bad idea if I give somebody food that then they can't taste because I didn't season it right, right? Yeah, so a lot of times with really strong flavors, I like to use them in a very subtle way that's actually not in the food at all. It's easier in pastry than it is in a savory kitchen because I have a lot of little techniques like this, but it was a great question. Not hook hand, not hook hand. Did you just switch them? Yeah. You switch which hand your hook is? Okay, cool. Hook. Uh, okay, fist bump. All right. I did the hook on your hand. Oh man. So we're waiting for our water. It's very close already. That's one of the reasons I love induction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bag. We're gonna make sure that everything comes out real nice and slow, right over the water. And right now I just have an offset spatula. I'm gonna dip it in the water. That way we can move with the pad of shoe. We don't need anything sharp. Uh, water is actually easiest to clean pad of shoe than anything else. So we'll dip it in water and what you're gonna see is this, okay? I haven't done this in a long time, so I might not be the most coordinated anymore. But we'll take it in the water, we'll pipe it out, and we'll just scrape it off. Great. Great. It's Great. recommended that these be smaller versus larger. Great. Because obviously if it gets too long, it's gonna be difficult for it to cook. And it's a really good idea Great. if they are all the same size. Great. Try and move around so you don't drop them right on top of each other. Right. And then when you have as many as you think you need, right. we start moving them around in the water. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna slowly poach in here, right? A How poach? Do, no, poach. How do we know that they are cooked? They will start to float near the surface, right? Because what we have in here is a lot of flour, a lot of eggs. We have a lot of extra moisture kicking around. We need all of that to coagulate so these will swell gently. They are not going to change shape a huge amount. If they do, something's wrong with your recipe, and they're going to start to float up. Now, look with me here, Pirate Blaze. Are they starting to float a little bit? Yeah. Kind of, right? A tiny bit. Yeah. Like, so that. Like when you hit it, it goes really hard. It's a, like I can see the shadow like a tiny bit on the red. Okay. Uh, we don't typically look for shadows in water, but sure. Um, what we're still waiting for is for them to start floating a little bit more. But this is it, this is Noki Parisienne. We cook these when they are gently floating, and of course, pull one out just like pasta, pull one out, taste it, make sure you're happy with the doneness. Scoop them out, dry them a little bit, toss them in a bowl, top it. We can top it with sauces, we can top it with cheeses, we can add meat to it, we can make a ragu, we can do all kinds of things. What Think did you say raccoon? I said ragu, not a raccoon, but <laughs> we can add all kinds of sauces and toppings to like this. Like raccoon. I heard you say raccoon, yes, but I said ragu. Um, and you'll see, if we're poaching, it'll take three to five minutes, maybe upwards of 10, depending on how much water and how many are in here. If we're gonna try and boil these, it is okay, but they will go super, super fast, and there's a very easy tendency to overcook them. So, we're getting close, look, there they go, they're floating. They're starting to float. All of them are floating. Yeah. You see, I'm just gently moving them around. I'm not trying to like really shake them up in the water. I'm just gently tossing them. But this is the pastry alternative to gnocchi. This is gnocchi Parisienne. For those of you who are looking for a great gnocchi recipe, sorry that I didn't deliver, but I probably wouldn't have if I tried it with potatoes either. Hold on, Buccaneer Blaze. We need a shot of you tasting these. People gotta know that I'm- No, 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 no. It's fine. I'm not gonna eat them. Why? You're the one who. Oh, I'm the one who's going to eat them? Yeah. You eat one and then I'll eat one. Okay, cool. And you tell me if it tastes good or not. Alright, so here we have two of them. Right? I and dry I'm it. Gonna eat. I'll eat one. Delicious. Tastes like gnocchi to me. It's a little warm, but... It's okay. No! Ah, ah, ah. Okay, we're going to Yeah, I just pulled it out. Okay, okay, look. It's <laughs> Okay, so you can see that they're coming out pretty rapidly now. 
If we drop them in the bowl, again, they won't change shape very much. It's one of kind of the key things about gnocchi parisienne. Uh, if you're looking for a particular shape, if you wanted them to have ridges on them for any reason, use a star tip. But otherwise, this is them, right? Uh -huh. They look basically the same way they went in. They're super pillowy, very, very soft. It's, it's like eating fresh made pasta, honestly. Uh, I can't think of a better way to describe it. It tastes like gnocchi. It looks like gnocchi, but we didn't have to use any potatoes. And I can make it way faster than if I tried to make traditional gnocchi. Can we turn it down so it doesn't heat that one again? Well, it's not going to heat that one because you threw it on the counter. But now that it's cold, do you want to try it? Uh, I do. Okay. It's just going to taste like pasta. Yay! Here we go. More. Here we go, Buccaneer Blaze. Taste it. Show me. <laughs> it tastes good, right? Now, one of the added benefits of this is since we used butter today, as that butter continues to cook, and of course as we boil it and introduce it to higher cooking temperatures, it's going to take on almost a cheese quality and flavor. So this has, it kind of tastes a little bit like mozzarella cheese, right bud? So it already tastes a little bit cheesy because of the butter that we use. No, it's fine, you can eat these. Uh, but if you wanted to add more cheese to it, you obviously could. You see we have the Buccaneer seal of approval already. It was very, very quick and easy to make. These do not reheat well. These are typically made to order. If you're planning to make these, make them and eat them within an hour, otherwise they just kind of start to dry out and get very, very dense. Are there any questions out there? Fucking your blaze, you like that, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah? Hold on. You want me to add a little cheese to it? Uh, yeah. Yeah? We have the lazy, already shredded cheese. Now, Buccaneer Blaze doesn't eat tomato sauce because he doesn't like things that are red. Uh, well, I do like two things that are red. Okay. Strawberry oh. and cherry. Oh, okay. As long as it was contradicting me, right? Fist bump. All right. So, we don't put tomato sauce on this, but you definitely could. Or, if you have a Buccaneer who doesn't eat red stuff, you could, of course, use a really, really beautiful salad dressing. That's nice. Uh, or you can make any other cheese-based sauce. So, if there are any questions, Buccaneer Blaze clearly approves. We're going to save the rest of this in this bag. We're going to save ours for dinner. As long as it hasn't cooked yet and it's in this bag, the only part of it that can dry out is right here in the tip. So, I'll fold this over. I will throw this in the refrigerator and it's good there for about a day. Otherwise, then it'll start to kind of oxidize and it'll lose its beautiful flavor that we've worked on developing. So, you can make this in the morning and use it in the afternoon. I would not recommend ever freezing this dough, and I also wouldn't recommend freezing anything that was already cooked. Wait, why does it have all don't, those don't, hey, don't, don't ask questions about this. Uh, he's asking questions about my induction burner, which has a lot of technical buttons on it, but that's okay. So this can be made in the morning, stored more or less in a vacuum sealed bag, or of course this. As long as it has what we call a synthetic skin, it won't oxidize. It'll still be good for poaching later tonight. Yes, Buccaneer Blaze. This time I won't point to it and about last uh, how about we talk off camera, bud, okay? Why? Oh, because these people don't need to hear it. Let's just thank everybody for their time. Say thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye, everybody.